I'm in Duncan, Oklahoma today, checking out the case of Alan Ruby, who was a, a young man who basically uh, lived more than his means. Um, he did everything in his power to appear to be wealthy to his family and friends. Meanwhile, all the money he was getting was from his parents, who were super rich. It culminated in the triple murders of his parents and his sister. He killed all three of them to try to inherit the house and all the money um, that his parents would have left behind. It's a pretty crazy case. You guys may have heard of Alan Ruby being dubbed as like the shopaholic. That's pretty accurate. So anyway, we're walking right now to where their house was. It's here in Duncan, Oklahoma. So let's get into it. So the day of the murders was October 9th, 2014. Alan Ruby was 19 years old at the time. And he ended up killing, of course, his parents, which were John and Joy. Uh, Joy went by the nickname Tinker. And Alan's 17 year old sister, Catherine. Catherine was a junior at Duncan High School. Um, while, I, while Alan was attending the University of Oklahoma. Now it says that he stole his father's gun and approached his mom in the kitchen. And uh, when she turned around, he shot her in the head. She apparently showed a little bit of life left, so he ended up shooting her a second time. His sister, Catherine, was outside washing her car and she came inside and Alan shot her once and she apparently died instantly. Um, and then Alan waited about an hour, Alan's father, John, uh, to come home from work, and then he shot him in the head. And apparently his father said, ouch, as he fell to the ground. And so he ended up shooting him one more time. It says after the murders, he took the surveillance footage from their home recording system and fled to the University of Oklahoma, again where he attended, and he took the Jeep that his father had bought him as a gift. And after that, he went to a party at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. He had a extreme liking for the flashy clothes, the flashy cars, uh, the shopping. And I think he liked to promote himself as being extremely uh, wealthy looking or rich looking. And so he did whatever he could to kind of keep up that appearance, uh, even at the cost of, again, killing his family. Um, it says that Alan, uh, before the murders, Alan actually was arrested for uh, basically using his grandmother's credit card I'm charging about five thousand dollars onto her onto her account while they were on vacation, and it also says that uh, he he continued to spend uh, his parents' money at a pretty rapid pace, and again, that is the reason why his parents uh, finally were fed up with it and basically cut him off. And that was kind of the turning point, which kind of led Alan to want to kill his family and basically just try to inherit uh, all the wealth. All right, guys, so we're walking around the corner here uh, to, to where the Rubies used to live and, of course, where they were killed by Alan. Um, the address is 1217 West Bent Tree Street. Again, here in Duncan, Oklahoma. I would say it's a pretty affluent, pretty nice uh, neighborhood. Again, it is very crazy to think that, you know, three, three family members lost their lives here from uh, just a rich, spoiled brat. I mean, to, to put it lightly. But anyway, again, it's 1217 again, just in case you forgot. Um, and what's cool about these addresses is they have like the Oklahoma University uh, kind of logo with their address. I think that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, 
This is the address. But just a sad case, again, as you know, his parents and sister were trying to do their best to make sure that Alan was not just continuing just to spend all their money. So they, they made appropriate decision by cutting him off. Every time I do cases like this where, you know, a, either a teenager or young adult um, ends up, you know, murdering his family for money purposes, uh, it always gets me thinking, you know, kind of the background, backstory. Um, how did this kid, now adult, how did they grow up? And again, not blaming uh, Alan's parents, John or Tinker at all. Um, I'm just thinking out loud. And, you know, if, if, a, if a kid is taught or raised in a house where, you know, money is everything. And, you know, if they give him literally everything that he wanted when he was younger, um, especially money and gifts and toys and everything else. And if he was taught that, you know, anything I want, I can have that kind of mindset and attitude can lead someone to what he did. And that is killing his parents and his sister in order to acquire the money. So again, not blaming his parents whatsoever, but I do think the way you raise your child can potentially have or change kind of the outcome of how they live their lives uh, when they're older. It's just, it's just un incredibly tragic that Alan uh, loved money more than his family. So Alan's father, John, was well known in the Oklahoma newspaper circles, and of course here in Duncan. Uh, the family owned the Duncan Banner, which again is the local newspaper, um, up until 1997 when they sold it. Um, John then bought uh, the Marlowe Review in 2007 and also the Comanche County Chronicle in 2013. And also was named vice president of the foundation of the Oklahoma Press Association. Um, so again, as you can imagine, uh, the family was pretty well off. Now, it says that um, Alan confessed to the crime in 2015. So, of course, he was in jail awaiting trial. Um, but he confessed to the crimes and actually said that he deserved to be put to death. Several months later, in August of 2015, he changed his plea to not guilty. Again, what's interesting is it didn't seem like he really felt much remorse from what I've been reading. Uh, he was just a greedy, greedy guy who again if you see some of his mug shots he looks like he's 40 but he's only you know 26 right now and now what's interesting is again about several months later after that um, he changed his mind and pled guilty once again and ended up um, getting three life sentences in prison uh, of course one life sentence for each victim the estate the house the rubies you know, possessions and of course, uh, Alan's grandmother's inheritance and all that. Alan would have been able to receive all that when he turned 21 from what I've been reading. And again, he was 19 when he committed the murders. So in other words, he was thinking that he would have acquired the estate, his grandmother's wealth and whatever else his parents left behind in a couple years after he killed them all. Of course, after he was caught, you know, the extended family um, put a stop or lawsuit to make sure uh, that Alan, of course, would never ever be able to touch any of that money. This is really cool. This is like a little, uh, little pond or waterfall. 